All right, good morning, guys. Um, Mr. Citro here. It is Tuesday. So I just want to quickly go through the agenda here. Um, as you may notice on the document that you have, we have a quiz slated for Friday, but I changed that, and we'll talk about that today. Your quiz will be next week. I'm going to give you a practice assignment that's has a grade associated with it so that you have a little time to reflect. Yesterday, you watched the Origins of Electricity, started Sections 1 and 2, which was about basic charges, um, an elementary charge, what that is. We did page 13 and 14 of the workbook. I will post that with answers explained in a minute. Page 13 is technically page 1. I just don't have the accessibility to change page numbers and scan items in here at home uh, as I don't have a, a working printer and scanner. Today you're going to cover a big portion of it. Now when I say big, um, we're going to cover section 2 to section 5. It's not a lot, um, but it covers the basis we need to get into Coulomb's Law and electroscope activities. So this is the week. Um, please try and make sure you get any back work done. Yesterday, I didn't give you a starter. I just said, let's get organized. Let's set a schedule and stay in contact, okay? Um, please use a few minutes to reflect on these first two items. So here's your reference table. Um, we started talking a little bit about this yesterday. Again, Mr. Mellon has posted some great videos that we're going to use to cover those notes. Um, I encourage you to use them. He's a great resource and... Um, he does a really good job explaining notes that follow, tend to follow our notes. So first things here, electrons, protons, and neutrons, the rest mass is down here. This will be more important in modern physics when we get to the end of the year, um, but we will need to know electrons and their mass for a couple units um, coming here. Universal mass unit, Planck's constant, electron volt, that deals a little bit with electricity, and we'll start to talk about that towards the tail end of this unit, but the constant elementary charge and a coulomb are really the most important. So basically an elementary charge is the smallest possible unit of charge we could have. So one elementary charge is equal to one proton or one electron. We cannot have half of an electron. Now very important here that the E without a negative symbol or superscript is elementary charge. E with a negative superscript means electron. And they are very similar. Please, if you're using electrons, we use this symbol. If we're using elementary charges, we use just a E. Now that's the smallest possible unit of charge we can have. We cannot have a half of that charge because we cannot have half of a proton or an electron. Right? We notice that is a very small amount. Okay, one elementary charge does not have a lot of charge in terms of coulombs. Now, a coulomb could be this many elementary charges or this many electrons. So if we have one coulomb of charge, it essentially means that we have 6.25 times 10 to the 18th elementary charges, that many extra electrons. Okay, so if it's... If it's a negative one coulomb, say a, a object, say a box or a balloon has a negative one coulomb of charge, that means it has excess 6.25 times 10 to the 18th elementary charges. And because it's negative, those elementary charges are electrons. Okay, now if it was a positive one coulomb object, that means it's deficient that many electrons. That's a lot of electrons. Okay, one tiny electron does not have a lot of charge. So here's our starter, and we're saying we have a negative balloon. Okay, now because this is negative and likes repel each other, they're almost evenly distributed throughout the balloon because they're constantly trying to repel from one another. The can, on the other hand, is positive 
and negative, and I'm going to use three negatives and three positives to represent a neutral charge of zero coulombs. And this is a, I'm just going to say a negative one coulomb charge. Okay, so this is clearly has more electrons, excess electrons, and this has the same number of electrons as protons. So after, when I bring that balloon close, this is the can, and this is the balloon, okay? After, when I bring this balloon that's negative close to this neutral can, what happens is the positives remain dispersed throughout the can. And because I have a larger can in this, I'm going to use six. Now, I also have six electrons. And electrons can move. But protons for this class do not move. In real life, they slightly move. Now, um, we're just going to be under the assumption for this whole class and for the regions that they do not move. Okay, It's only going to confuse you with protons mo moving, and you're never going to see a question with protons moving right now. So protons don't move, electrons only move. Now, when this balloon then gets close to this neutral can, the negatives over here repel. So they end up moving to the opposite side. And your new can, essentially, I don't know if I can erase this. We'll do a new can in red. This is before. After, as this can is starting to move, we see a lot of those electrons being left on the left-hand side and a lot of the protons remaining where they were. So this left-hand side... This looks like a positive. This left-hand side is more uh, negative, and this right-hand side is more positive. And that's because it's, and that is why it's attracted. Okay, so the electrons move away from the balloon side because they're repelling from the negatives in the balloon. Therefore, the positives tend to hold a more positive charge on this right-hand side, and that pulls the can towards the balloon. Number two is talking about elementary charges and objects. Can an object have a charge of 1.52 times 10 to the negative 18th coulombs? Well, we know that one elementary charge is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. We cannot have any division of that charge. So if you had two elementary charges, it's double that. Three elementary charges, it's triple that. We cannot have a half of an elementary charge in half of this. It does not work. So what we need to do is we, we need to figure out, whenever we're solving to determine if an object can actually have that charge, we need to solve how many elementary charges are in it. And it must be a whole number because we cannot have a half of an elementary charge, which would represent half of an electron. So if we plug this in, so let's go 1.52 times 10 to the negative 18th. For right now, guys, I just want you to keep plugging in the negatives. What this negative means is that this object has more electrons than protons. It's excess electrons. So if we plug this in your calculator, what you end up getting, if you do it properly, is a negative 9.5 elementary charges. Now, if you drop this negative symbol, you just end up with 9.5 elementary charges. In either case, the math remains the same. This negative is just a symbol to represent if the object has more or less electrons. And in this case, it has more electrons. So can we have a half of an electron? No. So explain why or why not. No, we can't have that, and that's because we cannot, can't have a half of an elementary charge. This is really difficult to write with my mouse. Okay, but you guys can probably hear me. You can't have half of an elementary charge. All right, so today um, we're going to watch two through five in terms of 
the note sections and complete 15 through 16. So on the Google Classroom, you have access to my YouTube channel. Okay, um, I have uploaded the whole unit of videos and I arranged them here. So yesterday you watched Origins of Electricity. Okay, we went over some of the starters so and the trying to voltage. voltage. And oh, yeah. he's gonna rub his foot against this carpet. Now look what happens when he rubs his foot against this carpet. Picks up these blue dots. Okay, so we saw that. Positive charges. You can't, um, and he's talking blue. about, again, the elementary charges here. And this is really nice where he explains that one Coulomb has this many elementary charges. So we did that. Today you're going to look at charges in general. All right. Rules for electrostatics, two all the Segment. way through five. Side. They want to get away as far as... Now, conduction and induction tends to be the most confusing thing. Basically, one touches the object to transfer electrons the other does not okay so in terms of induction we charge without contact we bring the rod close to a neutral object and if we ground the object that provides an avenue for those negative electrons to leave the object okay um, and when that happens and this is then unplugged we then end up with a more positive object. This is one of the only ways we can get a positively charged object. This is slightly different from conduction, which is back here, which we actually touch the object. And when we touch the object, some of the negatively charged electrons make their way into this sphere to evenly distribute them okay there is a conservation of charge when we touch two objects together that have two different charges those charges will balance okay now they don't have to balance and be neutral if you have a neutral object and a negatively charged object and you connect them and then you take them apart you then have two negatively charged objects and that amount of negative charge is just evenly split between the two okay so you're gonna follow through with some of that um, make sure you get the notes and then you're gonna make sure that we get those workbook questions done 15 and 16 is technically page 4 and 5 uh, no uh, 3 and 4 sorry 3 and 4 there okay um, so touch base with me if you have questions I'm gonna sign off for now um, and let me know guys alright have a good Tuesday.